not many people know him, um, but I've known Yasha since uh, 2010, where we met in our local hackerspace in Vienna called MetaLab. So I'd like to introduce him to uh, present uh, WebBoot, another project that we're working on here at Parallelipolis. Let me start. In January, I started working on WebBoot because I had a talk with uh, Smuggler and Frank Brown and some other inspiring people at the same time. And my mind got blown and I had to start it once I had the idea. If you have problems reading the text in the YouTube video, you can use the URL slides.webboot.org and you can access the homepage that I am using to show these slides uh, to read it in a bigger font. So let's start with the exciting stuff with the thought, with the fear, uncertainty and doubt. And before we start with it, keep in mind that it's always a disinfo strategy. It's pretty effective motivation though, so let's just go through it. I propose that there are no trustable resources on the web. All the pages we visit spy on us, and pages that do not spy can start doing so tomorrow. So let's go through some of those. Loading the Washington Post, it's a white page. And the only way to get the actual static HTML of that page is to allow some JavaScript. This JavaScript comes from WashingtonPost.com. Doesn't sound too bad, I get the HTML from there too. So let's allow it and let the page reload. Okay, I still have errors. Oh, wow. Well. So basically we are suddenly loading stuff from four different domains. I can now start guessing which of those I would need or not to make the page work. Let's forget about, get about it. Um, we have the same thing basically with the Austrian newspaper. They show me most of the content, but some of the article pictures won't work. Some other stuff won't work. Uh, Twitter. Very interesting why that cannot be done better. Of course, never mind Facebook. And one example of a page that actually does what it should in this case. Very well done. All of the content is there. And if I allow the JavaScript, we only load it from the same domain. Everything is coming from this server. If I trust that Y Combinator is capable of keeping the server pretty secure, it's fine. I do not know who owns stock in any company. I do not want to pick on any of the examples I'm picking here, I could go on long and pick hundreds of pages that do the same thing and are of equally big impact. And the other thing, so they thought about this, everything is working, but I cannot search without JavaScript. There's phone network flaws. I will jump through the things. On the slides homepage, you have links for everything, which is at least one source. One can find more by searching for it. Hi Alexa, okay Google, order toilet paper, please. 23 rolls. Yeah. There's a German security researcher which collects articles. I'm probably scrolling too fast. Lots of, lots of, lots of articles of uh, various virus scanning and security software 
uh, bundles that have flaws because they have to inspect the bundles that they try to protect you from. And a lot of those actually send various identifying parts about the programs you execute to servers. Yeah. And then we have the interesting part of actual censorship where I can try to load the Pirate Bay in Austria. And all I get is this Netzsperre, which, which tells me that the page is not accessible. And then there's hardware vulnerabilities I won't even go into. In, in the case which I will try to solve, we have some kind of uh, accessible content somewhere on the web, on IPFS, wherever. And we want to verify that the content that we are loading at least is the content that is intended to be loaded. So we can trust on first use when we load a homepage, because we have a source that tells us that the hashes for the homepage fit the hashes that we expect. Uh, exactly. Of course, on the page that I built for the slides, it works without JavaScript, but I also have errors if I don't use it because the script won't load. Um, and once, never mind, once I allow JavaScript, I get additional functionality. Whoop. Silence yeah, I know. When you look here, I actually verify the hashes of the files that I load, but I still only verify those hashes with my JavaScript files, and I get the hash and the file from the same server, which means that if somebody can get into my GitHub or into my hosting, and this person manages to get the server to rebuild, then this person can also re regenerate the hashes and the user would not realize that it even happens. And using a, a network of servers that actually have no other purpose than to deliver hashes in a publicly verifiable way to connect the different clients with each other would solve a part of this problem. Once we know that the page is usable and trustworthy on the first load, we will do a second uh, check every time the page loads and verify that there is no new version coming. So we can actually freeze certain versions and we give the user the possibility to choose to update when there are updates. At the same time, we will enable the developer of content to mark content as deprecated if it's not working anymore and to push urgent security fixes which instantly force all of the clients uh, to reload. Webboot is pretty much work in progress at the moment. It's a pretty big project and some of the parts are not even begun yet, like the browser extension and the databases. Uh, I plan for a publicly usable version by the 6th of June. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's mostly more fault. And yeah, that's basically it. I plan this to be the first part of a longer uh, series of talks regarding those topics. Thanks a lot for now. Um, Yasha, can you talk about how that's integrated with magic and the theming and um, basically show people how with magic this works? Uh, yeah, we can go through that. Uh, one part of the framework we are currently building is magic, which is a static page generator, which builds all of our documentation pages. It also is used on noncon.org and it basically pushes to GitHub and you have the benefits of uh, hosting on any kind of Git enabled toaster. And using magic, we can uh, generate the web boot verification steps and we can authenticate the user and connect his identity with PGP to his GitHub or to his Git host and to his homepage and to Keybase and to any other kind of PGP connected service. And users can then build a web of trust between each other where they can verify that certain people they trust, verify that certain people, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, and then, then you, why don't you talk about the public secret aspect so that everything's stored publicly, what it is that you store on GitHub. Oh, of course, using PGP allows us to have no private data. So all of the data we save can be public and has to be public. There's no other, there's no other blockchain, uh, there's no other parts of it that are similar to the blockchain, but this part is very similar in that regard. There is no private stuff. You can, you can verify everything at all times and there's no hidden, there's no hidden things. I'm going to talk about the multiple sources of truth, how that that's set up with, uh, with Webboot, uh, uh, where, the, where the sources of truth are verified in the oracles and the technology that you're using. So we have uh, multiple ways to get those hashes from multiple hostings. One of them is GitHub and GitLab. Uh, one of them will be our own server. Uh, any person can use the GitHub and GitLab to uh, fork and run their own servers, which would then get updates from the rest of the network. So the whole decentralized aspect just uh, hinges on people starting to run instances. In all of those regards, I will try to make it very easy to get a part of the system running on your own. Just as we do with the interchat, uh, interspace chat, and just as we try to do with all other software we build. So talk about using Eternity and Ethereum and 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 other chains uh, where the where the data will be available. Want to actually see it? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in. Uh, using using any kind of smart contract and probably likely using multiple of them as soon as possible. Uh, we have additional sources of truth and if we create multiple smart contracts, we can create ways for developers to also link their crypto wallets into the whole system. So one of the plans behind the thing is to create as many pseudonymous and uh, identities and link them together using your home pages, just as Keybase is a very good example where you can create a text file containing a cryptographic signature proving that you control this property at a certain point in time when you upload this file. 